I have never had mm. a hot sauce like that. Yeah. Wow. Welcome back to the fermentation adventure. Today we are making something sweet and spicy. We are making fermented jalapeno green apple hot sauce. Oh man, it's about to get hot in this kitchen. This is not your ordinary hot sauce. This is going to be sweet and spicy, a little tangy with a special ingredient because we're adding a green apple, a Granny Smith apple to hot sauce. Gonna have some tartness to it. I think this is gonna be good. And we love hot sauce, so I'm excited. So with this hot sauce, we're using the process of lacto-fermentation, which means there's microorganisms that are gonna be breaking down all the sugars and creating its own vinegar. Now, normally you might see a bunch of recipes where you blend everything up and then you boil it on the stove, but we're not doing that because that would kill everything. We are using a natural process. We're using the fermentation method and it creates lots and lots of flavor. It's, uh, it's definitely my favorite type of hot sauce. And not only flavor, it is full of probiotics. So this is like the healthiest hot sauce you can have. Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. So let's get started. So today we are making a one quart recipe, but if you have a lot of jalapenos or you have access to a lot of jalapenos, mm -hmm. We highly encourage you to double this recipe, maybe even quadruple this recipe, because we've actually made hot sauce by the gallon before, and it goes fast. We might even give it away as presents. Oh man, it makes the best presents. I'll show you later how to wrap it up nice and pretty for a gift. So to get started, our first ingredient is one bitter sour apple. And we're gonna be using a Granny Smith apple, so that traditional green apple. Boy, are these sour. It's gonna be perfect. Yeah, every time I bite into one of those, my face puckers like, you know, having a lime. You can really use any kind of apple, but we just thought a Granny Smith might be kind of tart and fun. I mean, really any apple is gonna work out because it's gonna add that sweetness and add that really good flavor. Besides, we're kind of going with a green theme today. You'll notice that most of our ingredients are green. So, green hot sauce on its way. But first thing we're going to do is cut this apple, take the core out. I don't think that would be good having hot sauce with a bunch of seeds and bits in it. And then we're going to cut it into slices. The thinner the slice, the better, because it's going to help the fermentation process kind of penetrate those apples and get all those good tangy flavors in your hot sauce so that we can have our hot sauce sooner. Oh, the sooner the better, because I want to taste this. We always compost, so we just have a little tiny bit of compost here. And now that we have all of our apple chips or apple slices, we're going to start filling the jar. And so we have a one quart mason jar today. And actually, it doesn't matter what order you put the ingredients in or if they're all mixed up. The point is to just get them in the jar. But today we're going to create a beautiful little masterpiece that's all beautifully layered so that you can enjoy it all week long as it ferments on the counter. So let's start our artwork. All right. You might need to like adjust them so that they lay a little bit flat. You kind of want your apples to fit as condensed as possible at the bottom. Usually if you shake the jar, everything kind of settles down mm -hmm. into place. Have a little shaking. I'm expecting, you know, about a third of the jar or so to be the apple pieces. And you want as much hot sauce as possible, so don't waste any space. <laughs> Our next ingredient is jalapenos. Now these things pack a ton of flavor, and since we're doing kind of a green theme, we're keeping the jalapenos, but you could use poblanos. You could try serranos, but I think that's going to be way too spicy. So I think jalapenos are going to be really good. We're going to be using eight ounces of jalapenos for this recipe. If that turns out to be about four jalapenos. Now really, it's just enough to fill maybe another about third of the jar. And you want to use the freshest jalapenos you can find. Nice and crispy, not too old, uh, no soft spots at all. If you go to ferment, using peppers that are a little bit older, you're more likely to get mold. In fact, we had that happen to us. And when we fermented, boy, were we surprised. We got a thick layer of mold on those. That was something. It was actually like a pretty good layer of mold, but then I just wanted to see what it looked like, so I let it go much longer, and it was thick. It was a little bit gross, but we threw that batch out. These are fresh. Okay, before we get started slicing these, I have to warn you, you might want to wear gloves because 
These are very spicy. And it doesn't really bother me too much. I'm not gonna be rubbing my eyes, so I'm just <laughs> gonna go barehanded. Living on the edge. <laughs> now we're gonna start by slicing these up into rounds. This breaks it down a little bit farther and helps with the fermentation process. Wow, I can really start smelling the spices coming off of there. It's almost like a pepper cloud. Once it becomes like in the air, you really could start coughing. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I think it's starting to irritate my throat. Yeah, like pepper spray. Yeah. You're gonna notice a little white pith along with the seeds. And if you cut those out, it'll actually make it not as spicy, but we're leaving that in there. Careful. Oh. Don't put them to your eyes. Oh, I know. Definitely not gonna do that. All right, that's a good looking bunch. So we're ready to put them into the jar? Yep. So wow. this is the next layer. So Don't rub your eyes. Don't yeah. rub your okay. eyes. Okay, you gotta remember that. <laughs> So we're ready for the next layer. I think we better use some tongs. It almost looks like it won't fit, but usually it compacts pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of push down a little bit because we definitely want to make room for our other ingredients. And this is looking so beautiful. Look at all those colors. I think we're ready for the next ingredient and it's gonna be adding a little bit of a different colored layer too. So that's pretty exciting. Our next ingredient is an onion but we're using one fourth of a medium sized onion for this recipe. All right, we're gonna slice this pretty thin and that's for two reasons. This is to help the fermentation process, but it also helps to fit into the jar the smaller the pieces so they can fit in all the little nooks and crannies. Now I'm just gonna break these up into little bits so they fit into the jar. Yeah, look at those layers forming. We're gonna have a nice pretty jar of different layers just to look at. I mean, essentially this is all gonna be together later, but. Looks good for now. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, those onions, they always get me. Woo! Oh, wait, don't. I almost rubbed my eyes. Ah! And the next ingredient that we are using is another aromatic like onions, and that is garlic. And we're gonna be using four garlic cloves today. You'll be glad you did. It's such a good flavor. It gives that deep kind of flavor to the hot sauce. First, I'm gonna start by breaking these apart. And then once I slice off the tips and smash them, then the skins will just come right off. I love when you smash them. It smells so good. Mm. Oh, wow. We're ready to add those to the jar. So we're just gonna put them right on top. That brings us to our next ingredient, which is an herb. And that is cilantro, which is a really refreshing herb. Uh, I don't know if you saw the, our previous recipe, but we had made pickled squash and we had used basil. It's amazing what herbs do to a ferment. Especially fresh. Oh yeah. So this, you don't even have to chop it up. You can just put it right on top of the jar because we're gonna be blending this up later anyway. Exactly. And for this recipe, we're gonna be using four sprigs of cilantro. So I'm counting that as a sprig, like each stem of the cilantro. So when you get a bunch, you pick out four little ones and we're just going to kind of curl it up and put it right at the top. Now you might be tempted to use dried cilantro because that's all you have in the cabinet, but if you can get out to the grocery store, definitely pick up some fresh cilantro because it has so much good flavor. And our final ingredient is the salt brine. So today we're gonna to be fermenting everything in the salt brine. The salt brine ratio we're gonna be using is one teaspoon of salt. It could be any kind of salt. We like to use sea salt actually, to one cup of non-chlorinated water. And again, it's very important that you use non-chlorinated water because this ferment is actually alive and you don't wanna kill off the bacteria and kill your ferment. And we really only need just enough salt brine to fill it up just to make sure nothing floats above the brine. We wanna keep everything below the brine level. This is because with lacto-fermentation, everything is breaking down below the brine. Anything that pops above the brine, you could possibly get mold and you don't want that. From our experience, we've found that about one and a half cups of salt brine should do. We're gonna start there and see if we need any more. And to make the salt brine, you just have to stir to dissolve all of the salt into the water. Now it's time to pour it in and see if we guessed correctly on one and a half cups of liquid. There's a tiny bit left, but we may need that in a little bit. So I'm not gonna throw this out yet. Just gonna put it to the side. I think we are just about ready for the fermentation process, but now we need one more thing. Like we said before, we wanna keep everything below the brine. And there's a couple different ways of doing that. Say if you just filled the jar, everything would be floating to the top. 
So we want something that'll weigh all of this down. Now before when we used to use jelly jars, we would put the jelly jar inside and then it would start weighing everything down and then many times the jar would just overflow so we had to put a plate on it. But what we really love are these glass fermentation weights and we just fit those right into the mouth of the jar. They take up very little space and they're actually pretty heavy so they weigh everything down. They have kind of a moat inside so the more you press it down, the water comes up and it'll actually flow into the weight. We don't need any more water in this, so it used almost exactly one and a half cups of salt brine. Yeah, but if you don't have enough, feel free to pour a little bit on the edge and it'll fill it up. Now that we have our weight in place, there's just one more step is to use a lid. They're like these silicone fermentation lids. Place this right on top and then screw it on and it keeps any oxygen from going into the jar, but lets all of those gases that you're gonna be seeing coming up out of the jar. Looks to me like we're ready for the fermentation process, but of course the question is, how long should this sit on the counter to ferment? We're making hot sauce, so what we like to do is about one week. We could go even farther, we could go two weeks or even a month, which softens it up a little bit, but we're gonna follow this jar throughout the fermentation process and show you what to expect. After 24 hours, the color is still bright and not much has changed. After two days, the jar is starting to take on a slight yellowish color, and there are bubbles starting to appear. After three days, the peppers are fermenting and losing their bright green color. We're also starting to see plenty of bubbles. After four days, we're starting to notice that healthy white sediment starting to form on the bottom of the jar, which is a byproduct of the fermentation process. We let it sit another day, and after six days of fermentation, there are so many bubbles. We even have a blue garlic, which is perfectly fine and a really good sign of fermentation. We have a side-by-side -side comparison. So we have our two jars here. This has been fermenting for six days, and this we just made. So six days, about a week, we couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> so check out the difference. What a big difference in color. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Check so, out the layers too, that's kind of neat. We've seen so many bubbles, very, so very many. active. The brine is just a little bit cloudy, but not too much. It's not sludgy or anything like that. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, and give it a smell test too. Oh, whoa, whoa. that smells so good. Wow. You can really smell the peppers. Actually, it really smells like our traditional hot sauce recipe that we make with jalapenos. We made that one not that long ago. It smells the same, but I bet it's gonna taste so different. Yeah, if you wanna know how to make that one, check out this video right here. It is so good. We've been making it for years, and that's the one I said we've been making it by the gallon. It's really nice, the combination of the weight and the lid that really makes an environment where there's no mold. I think we should see what the onions are like because it's only been six days and we definitely could ferment this out longer, but we wanna know, is it good enough to make our hot sauce right now? Let's see how the onions have been fermenting. Still a little firm. We could have gone like another week, but I think the taste is still going to be there and I kinda want hot sauce now, so. Yeah. I think we're gonna go for it, but definitely feel free to go the full two weeks. Wow. I'm trying it. Now it's a mm. little crispy still. Wow, but the flavor. Oh, that's spicy. <laughs> oh, whoa, I can't wait to blend oh. this up and see what the apples are gonna lend to it. Oh man, I can't oh. imagine. I think we're ready. Let's make some hot sauce. So we like our hot sauce thick and flavorful. So we're going to blend the entire contents of the jar, the brine and all. And you can use a regular blender to do this. It should be just fine because everything is turned soft. But we're gonna use a Vitamix. For one, it's what we have. For two, it's gonna help with all these seeds and make sure that we don't have pieces in our hot sauce. You ready? <laughs> that gets right to my throat. If you want, you could strain off the liquid, which means um, that would be more of like the traditional type of hot sauce that you would normally get. Or you could use a cheesecloth, or you could use a nut milk bag, but we like to use all of it. We mm -hmm. like to have like a nice thick sauce that you know you can pour on top of something. We kind of scoop it out, or we'll mm -hmm. talk about where we like to store this in a little bit. Right now, I think we should just try it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. Whoa, baby, that is mm. really good. I can definitely taste that apple. Mm. 
Wow. It kind of adds a little bit of a sweetness. It's not all spice. I have never had mm. a hot sauce like that. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, now don't get us wrong. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's pretty spicy. spicy. Yeah, it's definitely spicy. <laughs> so we have all this amazing hot sauce, but how do we store it for later? <clears throat> That's kind of a good question, isn't it? Because I don't know about you, but I don't plan to eat all of this tonight. Well, usually how I store it, I just put a straw in and <laughs> I think I'm good to go. That's not called storing it. That's just yeah. <laughs> eating but, it. <laughs> no, really though, uh, normally we store these in some kind of vessel. So to start off with, you could just pour it into a mason jar, the mason jar that you had just used. Or you could also put them into small little jelly jars. I've been doing that actually for the last probably three years around the holidays and they make really good gifts. You can put them in other things. I think our very favorite option is definitely getting a wine bottle that has a screw top. It mm -hmm. holds, you know, a, a lot of hot sauce. It's actually really easy to pour out of too because there's a, a thin neck up here. Same thing with using one of these flip top beer bottles or we could just use this beautiful little wine bottle here. That looks really nice. Most of the time we like to store our hot sauce and all ferments in the refrigerator. It kind of slows or almost stops the fermentation process so it won't go any further. But we have actually stored this on the counter or even in the pantry because the pH drops into the acid so much where it's, it's very tangy to the taste, but it also preserves it pretty well. Check on it every now and then and make sure it still looks okay. But to be safe, go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, and we would definitely recommend also, you know, having this within, I would say six months. Because we've actually tried hot sauce that we had in the fridge for, what was it, three years? Years. And it was still good. Everything was still below the brine, everything sank but the taste just wasn't good anymore. It was kind of stale. Yeah. And you know, you're making this because it tastes so freaking good. We hope you guys have loved making this jalapeno apple hot sauce. It's definitely one of my new favorite recipes for hot sauce. If you like this video, give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends, share this with your family, and get out there. And create some culture. That work? <laughs> oh, it hits you. <laughs> gonna be spicy.